Sorry, sorry to mess up your name, Elamine. You know that. Got love and respect for you. Welcome, fan Lebatardians. We are back. Oh, oh my lord. Oh. It's been a while. We've been enjoying those summer shows, those. Hmm? Sports Walrus, new characters debuted. Sorry, sorry to mess up your name, Elamine. You and that's got me thinking. They've been name dropping a couple fans there, Brian. And welcome back, Cousin B, to the proceedings. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. So it's got me thinking. Recently, they've we live in a racist country. introduced, or not introduced, they've name dropped a couple fans. Mike Ryan name dropped Steak Sauce. Jeremy Taché name dropped Yeti Blanc. And I'm thinking, We've been fan Levitard's been name dropped before. You know, we've been name dropped a couple times. Why, why don't we get name dropped more? Like steak sauce. What's big old steak sauce ever done? Hmm. That he gets name dropped so much. And then it hit me, Brian, it's because he's got the name steak sauce. That's funny, right? Mike Ryan picking a fan's name for someone who's going to clip his accidental happy birthday nip slip pick. Steak sauce is a funny name to pick. So I'm like, Hmm, I need to rebrand. And then it hit me. Nasty Nate. It's what you always call me in our text exchange. It's time, Brian, that we get nasty. Let's do it. So we're about to nasty this up. Mm-hmm. Oop. Excuse me. Sorry, not sorry. Mm-hmm. How you been, Brian? I've been I've been better than your bowels. Wow. Gotta clean that up. I'm nasty Nate now. This is how it's going to be. Oh, okay. Well, when I first uh, linked up with you guys on the show, I was going by the moniker of Cousin B because I wanted to make sure that there was mm-hmm. always someone who could help out the show with their lack of connection to culture. Far too mm-hmm. often, they're given opinions. And they're fairly thought out opinions, but they're not in tune with the culture. And Juju was <clears throat> doing a great... Juju has been doing a great job of informing these folks of what they need to know and not know of the culture. And I wanted to assist with that. So I figured, you know, the, the moniker Cousin B, you know, no G at the end. We don't do that. The Cousin B moniker was good enough to play that, play that, play that role. So Cousin B, Nasty Nate, we got Tasty Ty, but he in the... Tasty Ty's in the back working on what he's working on. And yeah, we're gonna do what we do because we do what we do and we did it. Gang gang. Oh mm. man, I'm really, I'm really regretting. Spoiler alert, I've been planning this for a while. Like you guys know, we haven't had an episode. And we've got a guest for you today. And I was like, you know what? I've been planning this. I'm gonna stick with it. It's not ideal. We have on the show today Lucy Rodine, newest member of Mission Control and the Metal Arc, Dan Lovatar Show. Very excited to talk with her. It's one of my favorite things whenever we get a, a new person on the show that we've never talked to and we get to kind of get to know them, help introduce them to, to our audience and anyone else that cares to know. But we'll see. I'll put it on. I'll, 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 I will allow Cousin B to place that stake in the proverbial island of... The interwebs, this will probably be, bar none, the most introspective version of Lucy we've gotten on the internet at all times. Well said. (laughs) It's this big bar there, too. Should we go ahead and uh, jump into our... uh, Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Now, that's a transition. Get it? (laughs) Transition. Well, friends, we are happy to be joined here by Meadowlark Media's newest member in 
Mission Control. I'm rebranding Nasty Nate. <laughs> and so is the shipping container to Mission Control. And we are joined by Lucy Rodine. Lucy, welcome. Thanks for, so much for having me. <laughs> Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. Great start. Just a, a fabulous start. And we're going to jump right in. We know you're looking for friends. And we hey, want to um, know between Nasty Nate and Cousin B, who, who would you go on a friend day with? So we're going to read a profile. You don't know. If I read, I might be reading Brian's. I might be reading mine. You don't know. Okay. But you're going to have to pick which one would you be more likely to go on a friend adventure with. So, all right, I'm ready. Here we go. Profile friend A. Looking for fun and casual. Crappy texter? Don't worry, climb on my back as I drive us down the proverbial mobile communication field in overtime. Don't fret about the awkwardness on the first date. I already had a shop before we met up. Tall enough to grab all the things off high shelves as long as you agree to grab the things on the lower shelves. Won't judge you by the color of your text. I know enough about everything to continue a conversation in a thoughtful manner, but not too much where I'm mansplaining everything. Let's go Huskies, the Yukon Huskies, not the Northwest phonies. And this is Bumble BFF profile friend B. I like listening to the Dan Lebitard show. I saw Shohei Otani give up four home runs and now... I don't know what to believe in anymore. I have so much inside of me, it's literally bursting out. But don't worry, I'm getting surgery soon. I enjoy watching a good movie or show, but Martin Scorsese, get over yourself. Live, laugh, strictly platonic love. Ooh, okay. I will say both of them are written in a, in a serial killer tone, which was a little <laughs> like, oh, all right. <laughs> but if I had to pick my serial killer of choice here, okay, I think I'm going to go with profile A because I feel like there were more details in there that I could like bumble BFF with, you know, more things I could work off or surgery. I'm like, what am I go to the hospital with you? Like, is that our first bumble BFF day? <laughs> so the first profile, what? my profile, what? by the way, we just become gave you enough detail to know how I would kill you if I was said serial killer. Yeah, well, the the hmm. green, the I won't judge you by your text bubble, that was a red flag that I chose to overlook because I will judge you by your text bubble. <laughs> Damn. Damn. But both great profiles. I would like to see like the photos with it and sort of how you kind of match up what you're saying with the pictures because that makes a big difference. Plus, Bumble gives you like little like, like they look, I don't even know how to describe it, but they're like little buttons or something that are like, these are my interests. So then I would align those two. Uh, it's a whole system. Do they have this for men? They, mm -hmm. I mean, Bumble BFF is like technically for everybody, but it's not for men. I can tell you right now, but it's not for like men. curves, curves, gym. <laughs> yeah. Like they, technically can't men go there. Yeah. But it's like, you're not yeah. welcome here. You gotcha. are not welcome here. So maybe they'll make like a, like a guys only version. And I think that would be more welcoming because when I see a guy on Bumble BFF, immediate no, immediate no. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Brian. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. So you get to ask the first question, Brian, since you're now officially best friends. All right, Luce. Is, is Luce a thing? Yeah. It, people have called me loose my whole life. I like it. I think it's endearing. I think it's dope, right? It's yeah. dope. And then if you like, if we have like a little tiff, hey, loose, you're acting a little Luciferish right now. Relax, all right? Yeah. Kind of. All right, loose. We know. Lucifer's my birth name. Okay. Um, loose, we know. <laughs> do, you tell, do you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I listen. Hey, we're in the weird world, right? We're in okay. the weird world. And I don't yeah. judge. I don't judge. I mean, Iowa. You know, um, so. When you were first introduced to all of the lovers of the Levitard universe, one of the first things that stood out was your fascination with estate sales, right? I love them. Is it possible 
to rapid fire off and freestyle a top five list of your top estate sale finds. Okay. Yes, I think I can do that. Okay. All right. Listen, I like it. You're right. already ready. You're already okay. ready. We'll start when you are ready All to right. go. Let me. So I'm doing my math right now. Okay. Of what? What I is have. the factoring in this? Is it just favorite items? Maybe cost to. I, I think I'm just going favorite items because I don't want to go like, and I'm just trying to do the order in my head because I know what number one is. I know no, what okay. number two is. I know three. I think I have four and I have five. There we go. Okay. All right. Number five. I have these cute little wine glasses that are different colors. It's not that exciting, but they're cute. Estate sales are the best place to get glassware and like nice plates and china and stuff like that because all these old people would always have the nicest plates and stuff. Think about going to your grandma's mm -hmm. house. That was a really fine china. What do you when they die, something's gonna happen to that. I buy it. Mm -hmm. so that's number five. Number four, I got the coolest puffer jacket ever. It's like Ooh. rainbow and it's like like pink and orange and green it's like it's so sick it's like the most fun like puffer jacket i have no use for it now that i live in miami <laughs> however very cool number now, three you did you did clarify and make sure they didn't die in that jacket though right is that something I, you're checking if they died in that jacket they died happy i'm okay with that <laughs> i'm all right with it i always wash the stuff when i get it it's like you can't try stuff on there obviously it's like weird um, but I watched the jacket when I got it. I got it for like 10 bucks. It's like really nice and it's super cute. And I don't really, I love colorful stuff and it's hard to find cool, colorful stuff. So I got a cool, colorful puffer jacket. Number three is my gumball machine. That one's super sick. I got it for like $10. It's just a regular little like gumball thing. Um, but I filled it with disco balls. So it's super cool. And I'm thinking, I haven't decided on this yet, but I'm thinking about painting it pink, but I don't know yet. Ooh. Jury's still out. Yeah. I would spray paint it pink. But I haven't committed. Is it to red it currently? It's red. Always and that's red. not that's not really my vibe. And I don't have a ton of red, but my record player is the same color red. Did not get that in a state sale, which it did. So they match. So I have to decide. It all depends on placement. Okay. But the gumball machine's still packed up right now. Number three is, or that was three. Number two is my giant crayon, just a big old yellow mm -hmm. crayon. It was intended to be a piggy bank. I put it on my, or I'm going to put it on my wall. And then I have like a neon strip and I'll put it right next to it. So it's going to look like the crayon drew the neon wow. strip. Okay. I'm very All excited right. for that one. How, very how Pinterest of you. It's very, I'm a Pinterest girly. That is the best app. I love it. Pinterest. <laughs> we see Twitter changing, Instagram threads. Pinterest is the one like staple. It, it, it's never going to change and it's always going to be good. Pinterest. And the then power of white women. It's, it is so strong. It is, and it's awesome. I love Pinterest. That app makes me so happy. Um, and then my number one is the obvious, the jukebox. It's so cool. It's will always be the coolest thing I own. I featured it on my Bumble BFF profile. It's my prized possession. Quite, Solid list. Quite the list there. Thank Solid you. Solid list. I'm excited Ooh. to get like a state sailing in Miami. I haven't had a ton of time yet. Any expensive to like super impressive finds where you're like, I don't even like this, but because of how expensive I know this item is, I have to purchase it. I will never buy something that I like. My rule of thumb is like, if I don't, if I see it and it isn't like Lucy, you need to buy me. If it's not screaming, I'm going to not buy it just because I love buying shit. It's fun. It's a hobby. I'm good at it. But sometimes I don't need that much stuff. You know, I only have a one bed. I can't, you know, I like keep that. everything I want. So they're usually at these estate sales, you'll see super awesome, like vintage, like Prada bags. And that stuff is super, super nice. It's still like more expensive, obviously not as expensive as like the actual value, but it's like a hundred bucks. And I don't, I cannot spend a hundred dollars in an estate sale or at like a thrift store or anything. Cause that's like defeats the purpose. And I don't really give a shit about designer stuff, but you'll see it. It's really nice. And that's almost gotten me a few times, but I'm like, girl, you don't care if it's a, if you're walking around with a Gucci bag or not, like, you don't, it doesn't matter. Leave that for Jess and Tony. I'll buy one for Jess. I'll get, I'll get her one as a gift. 
You know, Lucy, I know you're best friends with Brian, but I'm hoping you'll still answer this question. We'll see. Do you think doctors rehearse to try to impress their patients? Um, yeah, I'm the one who's getting surgery. Yeah. This has been, yeah, on my mind. I think, I think they do. I think it depends on the quality of a doctor. I think if they're a bad doctor, yeah, I think they rehearse. Really? I think yeah. the bad doctors, I would think the bad doctors don't rehearse. Well, no. I, it's, it depends. Are we referring to rehearse as practice here? Because if it's practice, then that's a good doctor. But if it's rehearsing, that's a fake doctor. Hmm. So, so here's where it came up. So what's bursting outside of me is my intestines. I have a hernia that I'm getting surgery for in that started back in February. It's been a journey. Oh God. So March, I go to urgent care because it's not getting better. And they do a CT scan. That doctor says, no hernia. I'm like, well, that can't be. Go see just regular practitioner checks. You have a hernia. Okay. Then refers me to another doctor, scrolls through my CT scan again, checks me out, says, you don't have a hernia. Mm. There's a, I'm pushing things back into my body, you know, but one thing that's been, yeah, sorry, nasty Nate here, rebrand, trying to get name dropped on the show. But, um, one thing that's been made clear by everyone up to this point is I was really constipated. Every doctor pointed that out to me. I was like, I get it. I'm backed up. I'm constipated. I know I got to get that fiber in my diet and stuff. So, you know, back and forth doctors telling me, then I see this doctor who finally is going to do surgery, says I have a hernia and it was obvious, but here's where I go. He, I think he rehearsed this. He goes through my CT scan and you probably never had a CT scan, but you lay down and you get, you like see your body. They scroll through it really quick. And he scrolls through this CT scan. He's like, first, let's look at your, your right side of your body. Scrolls through it. Everything looks normal. It goes through it super, super fast. Of course, he, he again notes that I'm constipated. And then he's like, let's look at your left side. Scrolls really quick. And then he's like, wait, look at this right here. And he's the only doctor who notices this. Look at this little tiny line on your CT scan here. That's a weakening in your abdominal wall. Let's go ahead and check. And then sure enough, you have a hernia. I'm like, there's no way with how fast he went through my CT scan that he just, boom, saw this tiny little line. I think he's looking through the CT scan beforehand and he's playing it off to me. Like, I've never looked at this. Let's look at this for the first time together and look, you know, how amazing I am that I spot this right away. So I'm, I'm thinking they definitely rehearse, at least some of them. He probably looked at it ahead of time. And I don't think he was so much rehearsing as it was looking at it with you to make you comfortable with the information he's giving you, you know, where it's like, if someone came in and told me, Hey, you have this, I would be like, okay, how do you know that? Where he kind of eliminated that question. Mm. Sounds like you have a good doctor. I Lucy, I'm I, Lucy, I need you to ask him the most important question. How did he sustain said hernia? I'm like, I'm really afraid to ask. How did you? A sneeze. Are you for real? That's it. Yeah. I mean, you don't. I put that on your Bumble BFF profile. Yeah. Once, <laughs> once you hit your thirties there, loose, your body is, it becomes your worst enemy. You don't look 30 at all. I'm, that's because I'm 35. You look that young. California sun. Thank you. Thank you. What's yeah. your skincare routine? I actually, nothing. I, yeah, I hate you. Yeah. You don't want to see my, my heels though. That's where, that's where all the aging happens is on my, on my dry cracked heels. Wait. So did you have a hernia when you went to Moss, Miami? No, that was December. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Whew. Yeah. About to say no. that's some real dedication there. Mm -hmm. it's been Lucy, a you let us know about these frogs that used to routinely bust into your living area. Yep. What other animals would routinely find their way in your home growing up? The, uh, the frogs were the big ones. So at my dad's house, the way it's built is very weird. Where my 
room is pretty separate from the rest of the house. Like it's still a part of it, but it's like separate in a weird way where I'm on the lowest level and everyone else is like a bit higher. And I'm right next to the pool. Sick Brad, we do have a pool. Um, mm. And so, give me Louie. Give me Lucy. Um, but the frogs would always like, because I was right next to the pool, if I'd open my door, the frogs would like sneak in. So that's how, and because you couldn't see them at night. Um, so like if I would go out at night, they'd pop in. It was mainly the frogs at my old, my dad's old house. I was in the basement and you could hear rats like pitter pattering that uh, dramatic, dramatic. Mm. I would take a frog over a rat, like pretty much any day. Yes. Um, so the rats were bad. And then I I'd usually get like a lot of little bugs, but bugs don't particularly bother me. Like, unless it's a big ass spider, then yeah. But for the most part, mm-hmm. I don't really care. But it was pretty much frogs. I was lucky to not get a ton. Like sometimes there was, I my biggest fear is snakes. I can't do it. That's that's it for me. No way. And one time I saw that a, like a big ass snake had shed its skin right outside my room. If a snake got into my room, I would simply pass away. Like there's there's nothing. I would be at, I'd be out for the count. There's no way. You heard it here first, folks. Metal Arc's newest. Lucy prefers frogs to rodents. See what I kind of see what you did there. Oh yeah, I see what you tried to do there. I would say it wasn't good, but I appreciate the effort. That's all I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can you tell us what's been your experience with Meadowlark and the Dan Lebetard show? Were you a listener before joining the show? Were you familiar with the show in any way? I, I was definitely familiar with the show. So once those conversations started happening, um, I obviously wanted to be very prepared. So I watched the show pretty religiously for, you know, four hours a day for a couple, for, you know, several months at a time. So by the time I started, I had a pretty decent idea of, you know, what all the sounds meant, everyone's sort of like mannerisms, kind of what people's moments were, what their specialties were. So I felt like decently prepared going into it. And so a big part of the reason why I was really excited for this job and and wanted to take this job is in like kind of my research and preparing for it, I became a fan of it. So now I was like, oh, cool. Like if I like the content that they're making, I'm sure as hell gonna like working there. And I have so far. So to that, who was most like you expected them to be and who was least like you expected them to be? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, oh my God, that's a great question. Who is most like I expected them to be? So Jess was like, has been my career crush for years. Like I have <laughs> followed her on Twitter forever. I, she was the only person I was like nervous to meet. Um, and she has been absolutely amazing. She's been so kind to me. Like, I, I don't know her that well, but I'd die for her. So Jess was definitely the most like what I expected because I had very high expectations. The least, that's really tough. Um, I thought like, I've always loved Roy and he, his laugh and his reaction when someone gets into the penalty box always would like make me <laughs> smile. So I thought he was a little happier, but he's kind of cranky, <laughs> but I God love damn. him. I love him so much, but he's definitely he'll like walk in and be like, how you doing today? Fine. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> but I like, and I love hanging out with him. Like he's my favorite person to sit with. Cause we're like, so polar offers opposites where I'm like very upbeat and positive and he's just like not having it, which I expected him to be a little more like me. Can you tell us anything about uh, what you'll be doing for the Dan Levitard show in Metal Arc? That's a great question. So um, right now you'll still see me. I'll be on the show a few days a week, which I'm like loving, enjoying. Um, definitely once college football starts to wrap up, that's my sport of choice. That's like my passion area. So you'll see me very involved with that. Um, I'm going to be helping out with their DraftKings deal and doing, you know, social media stuff for them. Cause that's kind of where my background is, is social media. But right now um, we're getting in the show and then sort of figuring out where I fit in. Well, oh, okay. Speaking of college football, we've got another question for you. Hawkeye related. Ooh. We are going to run through the schedule and see will the Iowa Hawkeyes average 25 points a game? I can tell you right now they will, and I'm not happy <laughs> about it. 
I'm oh, not okay. happy about it. Let's see. We're gonna we're gonna go game by game really, really quick here. So eight and four team. Every All year right. they're eight and four. And of course, we we have we have some music for this here. Some some thrilling music. At you or no wait. Utah State home. How many points? I, Iowa score over 30. At they Iowa gotta, State. Under 21. Western Michigan at home. 28. Who I should be vlogging this. How many against Utah State? That's going to be a lot. That's going to be a 30. That's going to be 30 plus. 30 plus. Okay. And we said less than 21 against Iowa State, 28 yes. against Western Michigan here. Yeah. Penn State. At Penn State. Happy Valley. Good. Seven max. Ooh. We are Michigan. not scoring points in that game. Michigan State at home. 24. Purdue. At home. Oof. Purdue's always so weird. I'll sick all the 21 Purdue. Mm. We're looking at you're gonna they're gonna have to get some points here at Wisconsin. They're not scoring points at Wisconsin. I'm lowballing them, and I think I should be giving them more credit because we have a quarterback now and we don't really play anybody. Mm. But Wisconsin's like 14. That's a nasty defense. Less than 20, okay. Minnesota. 35. Ooh. Even though it was like 10-3 last year, we usually kick their ass. You don't think PJ Fleck has a little, uh, they're just going to walk right over old PJ? PJ's never beat Iowa. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, he's never he's never beat Iowa. Mm. At Northwestern, here we go. Okay, I think I went too high on Minnesota, but Northwestern will put up 40. Ooh. Northwestern's going to gonna forfeit. They're going to forfeit. I will Rutgers. make that point. Um, mm. And by the way, I haven't specified this, but it's not 25 offensive points. It's 25 points, period. Yeah. I'm, the defense can mm -hmm. put up 40. Rutgers, oh my God, we'll win that by, we'll win at 28. 28 for Rutgers. And Illinois? 10. And Nebraska? Oh God, PTS State. Um, it's a Matt Rule Nebraska team. We put up 14. I was going to, I think I, towards the end, you made me nervous where you're like, you know, this got to start putting up points. I was like, okay, go big. Even though I was like, Nebraska, 14. Um, Iowa will reach that point, like Mark. I have zero doubt about it. It was intended to be that way. So Iowa would reach it so that we don't have to fire little Nepo baby over there. <laughs> Damn. All right, so are we? Go ahead, Brian. Oh, oh, Lucy. So I'm 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 located in Connecticut, right? So when it comes to college ball, unless it's with a basketball, there's no opinion that I have that's valid. Okay. Over my life, I've tried to establish some sort of connection to some sort of college football team. Um, I tried Miami. It was when they sucked, and then when I stopped yeah, caring. Do that. <laughs> yeah, your first fault choosing Miami. It was TCU. And then I found out after I bought a TCU hoodie that the C was for Christian. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Nothing wrong with that. But I was like, that's kind of like, I don't say me. And I gave up and then all of a sudden they got good. So what do I do? Like, who can I root for where it doesn't make me a front runner, but at the same time, I can do it casually so that I can have some sort of you know, meet in the game of college football because I hate this area of football. I love football, but when it comes to college, I just, I fall off the cliff. I think when it comes to college, it's not even particularly about like rooting for a team that's like middle of the pack because you can root for a middle of the pack team. I do that and I'm still miserable. I'm so <laughs> miserable. It's about like, you just need to go to a game. You need to go to an SEC game or you need to go to a big team oh, okay. game. Because I've been uh, to UConn Husky games, baby. That doesn't count. <laughs> That does not count. You go to a game and then you like experience the atmosphere and then it'll like click for you. You'll okay. go to a Penn State game and you'll be like, oh my God, this, this is, is it. that's right. 
Like it's all about just the experience. That's why I love college football so much because I genuinely think it's the best sporting atmosphere like in the world. I think it's like this and like soccer over in Europe. They have the same energy with it. It's insane. So go to a game. Like Florida State's gonna be really good this year. That might be a fun team to root for, even though people on the show when hear I say that be really <laughs> mad at me. Um, I would definitely just find like find your way to a game. Like that's okay. always such a fun like friend trip okay. is to like go to a random football game. Like go to an Ole Miss game. It's gonna be it'll be weird, but it's an experience. Go to Auburn game, whatever. Like any sort of big school, then you'll like get the vibe, and you're like, you know, this is for me or it isn't. Go to an Iowa game. Oh my God. Why did I not say that? Um, you won't see points, but man, will you have a fun time? Okay. Um, okay. I, I did calculate your points. You have them right now averaging 23.5 a game okay, with that. Give me, give me, they'll, all right, we'll bump up the score. They're going to reach the mark. There is, there is no way. There's no way Iowa um, does not do that because I lowballed them, but we have a competent quarterback now. We don't have a competent offensive coordinator. That's tough. We have great defense. They'll score a lot of points. Iowa's schedule is very easy. And when they said you need to score 25 points per game, which is the most ridiculous contract I've ever seen, they did that specifically <laughs> because they knew he can do that. That dummy, he could maybe do that. That dummy. <laughs> I don't think right. he's a dummy. And it's, I would say it to his face. All right, well, on the, topic of, on the topic of dummies, not dummy in terms of intelligence, but dummies in terms of stand-ins for humans. There's been this huge craze that's been sweeping the TikTok nation as of late. I say this because things exist before we find out about them, and then that's when it actually starts existing, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if I want to actually say that about this thing, because this isn't like a good thing, but whatever. Um, we're going to play our first version of NP she okay okay we need to know what gesture or associating audio response would you have to these following items we will have music and the music will be added in post okay I'm ready all right so the first one start off simple a rose granddaddy of them all okay kind of cheating but all right all right that's not cheating at all <laughs> You say rose, I think bull. Rose bull, okay. granddaddy of them all. What did you okay. do? You want me to not play the rules of your game? All right. A glizzy. Baseball. I'm just doing word association. Yeah. <laughs> the In the words of Mike Ryan, you have to do something with your hand, so. Baseball. All right. A corn on the cob. Iowa. Do that one more time. I-O-W-A, Iowa. Wow. We're going to have to draw games. that out. Because. All right. All right. <laughs> A pink high heel chair from Salvation Army that is quick with stains and overpriced. Thinking about chair. There's no sound. It's just, it's the sound of silence. Regret. A Hawkeye. A Hawkeye. Just, uh, right <laughs> what you got the whole YMCA thing for, for Iowa, for but nothing for the Hawkeye. For I maybe I like call or something. I don't know. What do they do with the games, uh, right? Because that's a big this. part of. Oh, so they whenever the y'all score, it's a bunch of people. It's, yeah, it's actually really cool because it'll get super loud and like they divide the section, the stadium up into four sections. So one, one section will go I O W A. Like, oh, that's the awesome. Gets a letter. It's really sick. So no one goes. Uh, ah! No, but how how cool would that be though if they yeah. did that? Like Georgia fans bark. We should call. Yeah, a bunch of animals. I like it. Yeah. And last but not least, a frog. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, ugh. Man, the PTSD of trying to get your frog out of, out of your room, that is a tough thing to do, I'll tell you. You deserve the 0.54 cents you made on all of those emojis in this version of MP she thank you Lucy for playing I'll that game I'll spin it at a state sale <laughs> I can probably get some cool with it you recently mentioned about being on a flight where you experienced some turbulence and the pilot thought it was a good time to run through the drink list yep. I'm wondering 
what drink could have the pilot could the pilot have announced that would have like put you the most at ease and which he, one would have unsettled you the most i think that if he had been like we have alcohol options like that would have unsettled me because i would have started to be like mm. oh my god he's he's preparing us for the end he wants us to not <laughs> feel what's about to happen most at ease i feel like Maybe if he had said like a, like a tea or something, you know, something that's like mm. a little calming, relaxing, just because like, a and it was nice. yeah, like a little sleepy time tea. Sure. I would have been chill, but he was just yelling. He was just yelling those Pepsi products, man. <laughs> I felt like I was in, I think you should leave sketch. Wow. Uh, for me, I actually, I go the opposite. What's putting me at ease. Well, I thought about this azima. If because Azima. growing up, I saw those ads all the time, but I wasn't old enough to try it and experience it. And then you get to drinking age and it's gone. So, I mean, I imagine if the pilot comes over, and he's all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to go over your drink list here. Uh, I managed to secure a crate of Azima for anyone who's interested. Like, that's going to put me. I'm like, wow, I'm going to take my mind off the turbulence because I'm, wow, I've never that, tried that before. That would do the opposite because yeah, where did this man say. find a crate of Zima and why is it going to be my last beverage before we die? Yeah, it would make me think that this is a like a celebratory like flash drink. Hmm. Or if it's you. something I'm casual, then I'm like, oh, okay, we're not going to die. Yeah. No, see, yeah. Ta Taco Bell Baja Blast would unsettle me because I'm like, Mountain Dew, you're out of hand with all your unique flavors. The fact that one of them has made its way to this airplane is unsettling me. You had, you should have kept it with just code red. That was a great different within the Mountain Dew universe, but you've gone too far. And if I find out that Baja Blast is being served on my planes, it's going to unsettle me. And that is a take from Nasty Nate that has nothing to do with me, <laughs> Brian Green, as someone who just released a spot on TikTok that you can hear me voicing of the most recent rendition of Mountain Dew flavor. So if you are on TikTok and you see that little ad that pops up for 15 seconds, that's my voice. I'm a voice actor, Lucy. Good um, So yeah, yeah. I have a good so, friend who's a voice actor. Oh, really? Yeah. Her, she's, now I do uh, the thing like, what's their name? But it's like, there's hundreds of thousands of us. Her mom was the original voice of like the barbie doll oh wow yeah the lansdowns i did a spot with barbie for the last super bowl oh that's so cool yeah i was um that's they did a out. what was the who's the actress that does uh frozen i think that's um um kristen bell her um she did a commercial with barbie and you know how like super bowl commercials always have like these bts spots and stuff like yeah. that uh they had a reporter by the name of reporter randy asking these questions of Kristen bell and barbie and he-man and skeletor and i i voiced reporter randy so nice. you know you, know, you, you know, have so. a very nice voice Good see i appreciate it that's why i listen hey this mouth ain't cheap that's what i tell people that's one of my <laughs> you know one of my taglines so <laughs> before we let you go right before we let you go once again we want to say thank you for allowing us the 30 minutes of your time because this yes. is amazing we've had a lot of people on the show a lot and this is by far <laughs> one of my <laughs> i'm not <laughs> you want to say it nate i'm just saying this is easily one of my favorite levitard show guest episodes that we've had all right what? i'll put Thank up a you. top five mm -hmm. later but it's it's up there it's up there if lucy bro den a journal or diary describing her first few weeks at Meadowlark, what would that entry look like? And I have, I have some music for this to help uh, inspire you here. So let's cue that up. I do, I do journal, so. Ooh. Um, okay, I started today. Still haven't met Dan yet, but I really like Pablo. He's so nice. Everyone here has been so nice to me. I don't know if Stu Gatz is real or not, because I haven't met him either. It's been two weeks now, and I still haven't met Stu Gatz. Wow, Stu Gatz is really nice, actually. 
a little odd, but I like him. This has been so fun. I think that's good. What do you think? You don't address your journal by like name? Yeah, you still don't name her. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I know I'm the only one writing it and I'm the only one reading it. <laughs> so I don't have to be like, dear diary. Like, yeah, no shit, it's for my diary. I'm writing it in my diary. Sometimes when I address my inner self, I call him little B. So oh, that's nice. I, I can delineate, you know. Yeah. Sometimes if I talk to myself, like I'll say, I'll give myself a nice like little nickname or something. Like Lucifer. But, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, but my diary, I'm not, diary, I see her. She's right there. <laughs> and she's not that juicy. I forget to write in her most of the time. And it'll be like me having like a super traumatic life event. And I write it down. And then it's my next intro is like four months later. And it's like, that last thing worked out. But here's what's wrong now. <laughs> here's no resolution ever. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you for not only bringing a bright light to the show. Um, these summer months are hard for not only listeners of the show, but I'm assuming it's hard for those on the show, right? Trying to grab and pull things to speak of. And when you get a, a introduction to a bright new face, it's always awesome for us because I know mm -hmm. certain people kind of get concerned about people complaining about the show. But if we went off what the complainers did, we would never be happy, right? Honestly, I've been shocked. And I know I'm going to say this immediately regret it. It's going to bite me in the ass. <laughs> um, everyone has been so kind to me online, which I'm, I was not prepared for at all. Like I'm still, I'm like waiting for the other shoe to drop and it will. That's just the way the internet works. But truly like the fan base of the show has been so welcoming and nice and friendly to me. And I'm like, you guys made it seem a lot worse than it would be. Like you guys made it seem like I would be getting bullied real bad. And I probably will, <laughs> but right now it's been good. <laughs> when that other shoe drops, it'll be in the shape of a pink high heel chair from Salvation Army that is equipped with stains and overpriced. Oh, that one's going to Thank hurt you, so bad. Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. Thank, thank you, Lucy. Yeah. Lucy. Thank, thank you, Lucy. You, did we give Lucy you a thank you us. before the show did? Because I don't think the show has given you a thank you yet, have they? Dan said something really nice to me on air, which I wasn't expecting. So I uh -huh. count that. Okay. okay. He said I was killing it, and I'll never forget that. All right. Mm -hmm. And then All right. everyone was like, whoa, he doesn't say stuff like that. You didn't remember that one. I said, okay. Well, listen, when you have your David Sampson moment and the world hates you, we'll be in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. really you like can think him. of us as the, as the Stan Levitard show. Ooh, I see what you did there. That was clever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That was pretty clever. Yeah, you guys are great. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. No, you're awesome. You're awesome. Um, you know, like it's, it's sometimes with these types of interviews, it's always like, are you guys just talking to me to talk to them? Like, as like, you know how it is, you know how that yeah. is when people get near you and they're like, it's like, no, we want to know about Lucy. Yeah. It's, that's mm -hmm. been a weird thing. It's my favorite part about the, like, it's funny to see people who I don't like have a big close with, like come out of the woodworks, like, oh my God. Ah, okay. How you doing? And I'm <laughs> okay. like, yeah. Don't talk Bitches. to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's only happened it. like once, but it was hey. a very redeeming moment for me. That's all that matters. That's all that oh. matters. Awesome. Well, well th thank you guys. Thanks again. And before you go, I'd, I'd hate to not ask this real quick last question, having someone with so much uh, Big Ten expertise here and not asking this question. How many burgers is Jim Harbaugh putting away each week for breakfast? What do you think? Dude, it's got to be like, it's got to be a pretty daily thing. Like two burgers, I would say 10, five days a week, two days off. Because it's got to be regular. There's not a single normal thing about that man. <laughs> not one. No. And I know he said that was the last thing, but here's the real last thing. Um, <laughs> what's more likely to happen? Lucy drinking wine at 8 a.m. with unbrushed teeth or eating a burger at 10 a.m.? I would say probably a burger at 10 a.m. I feel like when you get 8 a.m. wine, even if you are like training for the, you know, wine tasting stuff, that's when it's a problem. That's when you look yourself in the mirror. Or your night hasn't ended yet. Get used to it. You're in Miami, baby. Oh, my God. I'm not built like that. <laughs> I'm so not built. Like I did that four years at Iowa. Check that box. Now we're done. I understand. Your inside is going to look like Nathan's. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. You enjoy the rest of your week. Be awesome. Awesome. Thank you, guys.
like I told y'all, bar none, that was the most thoughtful, entertaining, introspective, eye-opening interview that has ever graced Dan Patrick's and Dan Levitard's <sighs> internet ever. If it involved Lucy, she just blew away all sorts of previous media forms in which she was featured, and she did that with us. So once again, no one else is going to give you the high quality, the hard hitting, the real spitting type of introspect introspective viewpoints that Cousin B and Nat nasty nate on the fan levitard show could do no one can do it like us trust me when i say yeah. that but Be believe it when you hear it there's no need to fear it make sure y'all let us know who y'all would like to see us interview next in the metal in the metal lark dan levitard universe because this is where we do it no one else gives it up like we give it up no one Gang, gang. Yeah.